In this presentation, we will discuss our first method for entering a loan balance and the related payments on the loan within QuickBooks Online. We'll be entering our method that coincides best with our process here of entering transactions as they clear the bank statement. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Here is our guitar lessons and equipment file. We're going to start off by going to the reports on the left side. And within the reports, we're going to take a look at our profit and loss report. Within the profit and loss report, we're going to change the dates up top from 010119, 022819, January and February of 2019, and run that report. And you'll recall we had two items of the uncategorized areas. We had the uncategorized income, uncategorized expenses. We're going to be dealing with those items that have to do with loans at this time. So you'll recall what we did is we entered data from our uh, system, from our bank statement into the accounts. And we had the bank statement for January. The bank statement for January had this huge amount for a deposit, which looked out of the ordinary, which we made a note for. We said, hey, that's a large dollar amount for a deposit. That's larger than what we would normally see as deposits from customers we asked a question about it. We had that in our open items. And then we also saw in February, this payment amount or payment amount here to Wells Fargo, 944. And that looked like uh, we didn't know who that vendor was. And those two, as we see them, look kind of suspicious, like maybe, you know, there's a loan of some kind that, that happened on the deposit side. And maybe this is going to be uh, an expense on it or the payment of that loan. So th something like that is what we're kind of guessing here. So we're going to ask the client. We put that into our questionnaire. We said, okay, there's, you know, in our open items, we're going to say there was a $50,000 amount for a deposit. It seems high. We don't want to record it as income because it might be something like a loan. And if we ask the client, they say, yes, it's a loan. We're going to say, oh, okay, it's a loan. So now we have to put that on the books as a loan. So we know where to recategorize that. And then we asked about this open item, this 944 check that we had. We had that and we said, hey, well, there's a 944 check. What is that? Well, that's a loan payment. You know, okay, okay, it's a loan payment. Is it a loan payment on that $50,000 loan that we had in January? That's the one, that's the loan payment. And then of course, we're gonna have to put that on the books. Now, as we do that, we're, gonna, we're probably gonna say under this method, we're gonna say, hey, you wanna make sure to get that loan documentation and get it to the tax preparer at the end of the year so they can properly allocate the amount of interest for the expense uh, So and make any kind of adjusting entries at the end of the year. We're going to record it on more of a cash basis method here, and we're going to be clear with the tax preparer at the end of the year that there is this loan. Tell them how we're recording it and let them know that they're going to have to determine what the interest portion of the loan is possibly, if it's deductible, to deduct it and let them deal with it. And in any case, no matter what we do, there's going to be that kind of issue. So the simple method, a simple method, as long as it's clear, that is then communicated to the client and the tax preparer is a good method to use. And that's what we'll start off with here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that that loan first is the first thing we're going to deal with. So we had that in uncategorized income on the sales. We could once again go to the check register and find that or to the checking account on the balance sheet. But we put it into uncategorized income. And that's, the, that's why we put it there. So the easiest place to go is right to the profit and loss and say we put it into this 60000 So we're going to say, all right, there's that 60000 Let's go in there. This $50,000 loan then isn't income. All right? We don't want it on the income statement. What is it? It's something we have to pay back. It's a liability. So we need to take it out of income and put it into a balance sheet account. Get it off the income statement entirely, the profit and loss. So we're going to select it and say that this needs to go into a loan. So it's a, it's, it is correct that it went into the checking account. So this amount is right. This account needs to change then. And this account needs to then be uh, a loan payable. And we already set up a loan account when we finance the equipment. Otherwise, we can add the account. So we're going to put it into loan payable. That's the one, that's the one we want. Now we might want to put it into a long-term loan because this is one that might be more of a long-term type of loan. I'm going to keep it in the same account here, however. Also note that if you're tracking the loans within the bookkeeping system, you may want to have separate loan accounts and there's pros and cons to having separate loan accounts. For example, you might want to say this is loan payable and then put like the last four digits of the loan number on it 
and that will be able to help you to kind of track exactly what the payment left is on each particular loan. The, the, bon the good thing about that is it's nice and clear right on your balance sheet when you see it, which is probably good for small businesses. The bad thing about it is that it's now you have multiple loan accounts. When, so when you present it, you got multiple loan accounts and you might have account numbers kind of on your balance sheet, which isn't the nice for presenting. But you can always adjust those things as well. You also just have a lot more you know, accounts that you have to deal with. So just be aware of that. We're going to put it in here. And then as we go in here, when we go to the end of the year, as we go into loan payables, we're going to tell the accountant, look, there's basically two loans that you're going to have to deal with here. You want to get the loan documents and you want to just double check that we're getting the full amount of interest on those loans uh, as, as a deduction if that's something that is applicable. So we'll put it into loans payable and we'll say save. I'm just going to say save and close, <laughs> save and close. And then yes, we've adjusted that. And so then we've now recategorized that. So it's, uh, it's been removed from uncategorized income. If we go back to our report summary, then now it's no longer an uncategorized income, which is great because that was really distorting things because it looked like we had a huge amount of income, which is wrong. And for taxes, that would be bad because they, if that was recorded as income, they'd be paying taxes possibly on it. And that would be not good. So we had, so it's really important to obviously recategorize. That's why if you see the big deposit amounts, you want to make sure to ask about that. And then it's going to be on the balance sheet. So where did it go? If we right click up top and duplicate this tab, right click and duplicate. And then if we pull the one from the left to the right, and then we're going to change this one. So we got the profit and loss on the left. The one on the right will be the balance sheet. So we're going to go to the reports down below. We're going to go to our favorite report. And that's the balance sheet report. One of the favorites, at least. One of the two top two. We're going to say the dates 010119 to 022819. That's January through February 2019. Run that report. And then if we scroll down, we've got the liability. So here's the loan payable. Now it has those two loans. So remember what we do at the end of the year. We're going to print this out, get this detailed report and say, hey, there's these two loans that happened this time period. The, the, this is the amount that the loan was taken out. Make sure to get any documentation for that and prepare and give it to the tax preparer to make sure that they're getting the proper interest on it. And we'll tell them exactly how we're recording it so that they can make the adjustment needed. And then we're going to go back and we're going to say that one is done. So now we, we've dealt with that. And then the other side that we need to deal with is going to be the 944 payment that we had. That's what we'll see clear in the bank. Now that payment includes possibly interest and principal. And so normally the payments are actually kind of difficult to record on a loan. And oftentimes we don't even have the, we only know the payment amount. In other words, a lot of times the loan uh, doesn't show us the amortization. The amortization will look something like this. So it would say, hey, this is the payment we're having. But each payment that we make has an interest portion and a principal portion. And the two are not the same. So each payment we have, if we were to record this properly, we would have to change every time and have three accounts every time. Not too difficult. However, it is something that will change every time. We can't just make it one payment every time. And we will need an amortization table most of the time to do that. We'll show how to build an amortization schedule next time but just to give an example of what would need to be done to break that out properly we'll show this what we're going to do under the simple method is to say we're just going to record the payment as a payment reducing the loan we're just going to reduce the loan directly for the full payment including interest and we're going to tell the preparer the tax preparer at the end of the year that that is what we did and that they're going to need to go through and make the amortization schedule if necessary so that they can break out the interest portion to be deductible if necessary at the end of the year. So as long as we're clear on that, we're going to have to do that. The other method is we can call the tax preparer now and make the amortization schedule. But we, but this, this method will work fine as long as we're clear on it. So then we're going to go to the profit and loss second tab. We're going to scroll down and we're going to say now there's an uncategorized expense. So we'll go into uncategorized expense. And this 9,000, I'm going to hit the hamburger up top. <laughs> and we're going to change this 944, that 944 to Wells Fargo. We're going to take it out of uncategorized. So we'll select that. 
And the easy method is just to take it to the loan. We're going to reduce the loan with it. And again, that's not totally proper, but as long as we're clear on it, it's, it's an easy method, method to use. We'll look at another method next time. So we're just going to put it to loan payable, the whole thing, and put the 944 to the loan payable. We'll, okay, we'll say save and close. Yes. And that, of course, will remove it from this account, scrolling back up top, back to the report. It's no longer in uncategorized expense. Where did it go? And, and note that's important, again, because the loan, that whole payment isn't deductible. Only the small portion, which is interest, which is, if we look at this amount, the interest is, is 208 of the, of the 944 is deductible. And we don't really know exactly what that is unless we have the amortization schedule. So we're going to take that out of there and we're going to put it into the balance sheet. And so now it's now included in the loan payable balance sheet. So again, if we go into this account now, we can then provide this detail to the, to the account, to the tax preparer at the end of the year and say, hey, this, this is the loan. There's the payment we made on it. We don't know how much is interest in principal because we don't have an amortization schedule. We've asked the client to provide you with that so that you can use it to create the amortization schedule so that you can then know the interest portion and then deduct the proper portion of interest. So that's what, so we want to make sure to provide this information to the you know, tax preparer at the end of the year to make that adjustment. Uh, next time, we'll, we'll take a look at making that adjustment by creating uh, an amortization schedule, which we often have to do for the loan to break this out properly if we wanted to do it ourselves as we go. And we'll do a bit of a more complex method, a more proper method uh, to, to break this information out on our side of things. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.